Welcome to Shape by Faith. I'm Teresa Rowe, where we shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. I'm so excited about my guest who's on the phone, Eric Steven. He's based out of Phoenix, Arizona. He's been traveling full time around the U.S. and Canada with his wife and son for the past five years, sharing his unique style of hip hop which blends his faith with his love for geek culture. And we're going to get into that, which he has labeled Christian Nerdcore. Eric, thank you for being my guest on Shape by Faith. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, A friend of mine, Sherelle Wallace, um, she mentioned you um, when we were talking about, you know, inviting different guests on podcasts and on my radio show. And and uh, she highly suggested you. And so I'm so glad she did. It's a God thing, you know, definitely. definitely. Yeah. yeah. So I want to ask you a few things about your background so the listeners get to know who you are and where you came from. Um, you moved around a lot growing up, um, living yeah. in five different states before you were in high school. So share with us what, what that was like for you. Oh, it was it was hard because um, you know uh, we would like I would make I would make a friend and then I would be gone you know so it, so then and then as the uh, the older the older I got the harder it was to make friends because you know those kids have been growing up together in their schools or or whatnot you know and so by the time I reached high school. All those kids, they've been going to, to school together since since elementary school, and here I come. So it's it, it just made it really difficult to uh, make friends or, or keep friends. And so it was basically just uh, me and my sister. She, my, my sister is younger than me, so she, uh, she had a little bit of an easier time uh-huh. uh, adjusting with, with the friend-making than I did. Uh, but I would say that was the hardest part of it are you um, that oh i'm sorry yeah. eric um no go, go ahead <laughs> are you more extroverted or more introverted or kind of in the mid middle of it it really all depends <laughs> um i guess i guess you would say i'm as a social ex wait social introvert social extrovert i, uh-huh. I social introvert that's what it is i think where i can um because of what I do with the music and everything, I can I can be extroverted when I need to be, um, but it or when I'm around people that I'm comfortable with. Right. But uh, but I get really drained really fast, and so then I have to go recharge. But I I would say if I just had to pick one side or the other, I would say I definitely am more introverted than extroverted. You know, I I find that interesting. And a lot of people that are creative um, are like that. And uh, I'm not saying I'm the most creative, but I'm very much like that. And so my (laughs) husband, when he first met me, he thought I was like this standoffish, you know, stiff necked woman is what he called me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I'm like, you don't know who I, you know what I mean? So, you know, I, I'm that more introverted, but when I'm, you know, speaking in front of groups, I mean, I, I love that, you know, that doesn't bother me in the least bit, but it's that one-on-one interaction and that social it's thing. Small that, talk, yeah. Yes, small yes. Talk I'm like, ah, yeah. <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> so, <laughs> so during that time for you, I mean, it's hard enough when kids are like, blended together in a high school and they're from the same community, it's hard enough, you know, in high school. Um, where did you find comfort d- during this time in your life? Uh, probably comic books. Okay. Um, yeah, like, like, honestly, like, I would have to say, I'd have to say comic books and um, video games and stuff, stuff like that. Anything that could keep my mind occupied and actually... Um, uh, keep it uh, active, also, because the uh, the comic books, you know, spark my imagination. So do the video games. Any anything that just could keep me, um, you know, involved. I right, guess. and that's interesting because the more we get into, um, you know, this interview, the listeners going to find out. I mean, you're using all of that right now in what you do. I think it's interesting how. Um, The things that we use to comfort us or to turn to are the very things that God uses, 
you know, to bring glory oh, yeah. to him. I mean, that's really neat how he does that. Um, were you raised in a Christian home, and did you have a relationship with Jesus Christ as a teenager? Uh, ish, kind of, like, uh, right. kind of. We, we, we started going to church when I was 13. No, not 13, but in, in middle school. We started going when I was in middle school. Um, but then I didn't really uh, know... Jesus, I didn't know, I knew of God, I didn't know him, you know, know, know him. It wasn't until after, after high school that, um, I got saved, uh, during, during high school, um, my, the church that I went to during high school was kind of a dead church, spiritually dead church, uh, the, uh, pastor very rarely talked about Jesus, um, in fact, like, I, I mentioned this story a lot, uh, one of the, one of the, he had like a five week series, I, I, I think it was five weeks, on finding the gospel in Harry Potter. Wow. And, um, and which is, which is a unique tool. I mean, mm-hmm. I do stuff like that too, mm-hmm. you know, which is a unique tool. But, um, I don't think it should be a five week sermon on, I don't think that should be the main thing. I should think that should be like a, a one off, possibly like, go, so, hey, I was watching, I was watching Harry Potter and I noticed these, elements of the gospel in, in there, you know? Right. But, uh, but doing a five week series on that, that tells me you're, you're taken away from the gospel. Like, how about we find the gospel in the gospel first? How about we teach that? And then, you know, we can go, Hey, did you notice this in Harry Potter? You know, right. Some, something like that. So, right. Well, um, you know, after high school, okay, you battled depression and you battled suicidal tendencies. So do you mind sharing that? What happened? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so uh, my uh, it was right after high school, and a lot of my friends went off to college. Um, all the people that I knew from school anyway went off to college. I didn't go to college. Um, my uh, girlfriend broke up with me. Uh, I lost my job, and so I, I also like to joke that like Taylor Swift wrote a song about me, you know. And so right. it's just like all this. All this stuff just started happening. It was just like a whirlwind, and I just started spiraling down. And I started getting more and more depressed. And then it got to the point where um, I didn't want to be alive anymore. Um, I, I just started hating life. I started hating my life. And you start off with a thought. You know, it's just like the world would be better off if I was gone or no one would miss me if I was gone, so, something like that. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, that's all you're thinking about. And then that becomes your reality, and that's what you think is true. Right. And I was, and I was sitting there, and I planned it out. And the the day that I was going to do this, and I'm just sitting in my room, and I'm like, I don't want to die, you know. But it's like, but this is the only the only solution. I see the only way out. And I just, I cried out to God, and I said, you know, if you are real, I need you right now. And He showed up, mm. and and it was like. Uh, it's like all of a sudden, it's like I knew I knew he was real, and I knew that's not what he wanted me to do, and I didn't I didn't know what else he wanted from me. I didn't know anything else, but it's like I knew that he didn't want that for me. Right. And, he he enlightened you know, your eyes, right? Like there was yeah. just this knowing that he was enlightening your heart. Right. It was just it was like it was like yeah, the veils from my eyes, almost like you know when Paul was. Uh, walking to Damascus, and uh, he, Jesus just showed up to him. You know, mm-hmm. it was it was almost like like that. Except you know, Jesus didn't just walk into my room, but but it was, but he kind of did at the same time. <laughs> right, I, I understand. And, uh, and then uh, a few years later, I still, you know, I st- I still struggle with depression to this day. It's still, um, I, I still have to remind myself of God's truth, but I don't I don't give into it like I did before, and I don't, you know, it, it'll show up. Because I think the enemy knows that that's a that's a sore spot for me, and yes. so I think he tries to to poke at me with it. And I know that like if there was a couple of years after I got saved that um, even though I was in God's hand, I was still trying to run away from Him. I was trying to do things of my own strength, and and it got to the point where it's like I started like experimenting with self harm, mm. and I started I started like cutting myself. And it was, that was the dumbest thing that I have ever done in my life. And, uh, you know, thankfully, 
thankfully I had some friends that stepped up and challenged me and loved me and, you know, brought me back to truth on, on that. And so, and I haven't, I haven't done that ever since wow. that's, that's been years. And so now I use, I go and I, I try to reach out to people that are self-harming. I try to reach out to people that are um, on the fringe of society and stuff and stuff like that. Right. Okay, Erica, I hate to cut you off here. And you, wow, your story's incredible. But we're going to take a quick break, okay? Uh, okay. And, and when we come back, we're going to hear more from Eric Stephen on Shape by Faith. Welcome back to Shape by Faith, where we shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. My guest is Eric Stephen. He is based out of Phoenix, Arizona. He's on the phone. He is a Christian rapper. Um, he writes lyrics. Um, what your your label is, Christian Nerdcore. You were sharing yeah. your amazing story, how you came close to Jesus, how you came to know him, how he entered into your heart and into your life. So I would love you for you to continue, Eric, um, sharing what you were sharing. Okay, so um, so I'd mentioned that I'd, I'd struggled with depression, and then um, I'd given my life to Christ over that, and and then even after even after that, I still struggled with depression here and there, and started uh, self harm, started experimenting with self harm, with with cutting myself, and uh, you know, so now you know, thankfully, like I said, that. Uh, I had some friends that, that that brought me back to truth that that reminded me of how much I'm worth and that I am made in God's image and that I am not that's not something that He would want for me and um, and so now now we go out that's that's my heart is to to reach people on the fringe to reach people that are self harming to To remind them about that, to remind them of God's truth, of who He is, of who He sees them as. Um, there's so many times where we come into a town, and uh, whether it's like a school or a church or or anywhere, and we all, we hear this so many times, and it breaks my heart that where they say, "If only you were here um, last week or last month." Because they just had like a student, another student, uh, take their life. Oh wow! And and that that happens so much, and that really makes me mad because because yes, like I come in and I bring this this message, um, but you were there. Mm-hmm. Why why didn't you reach out to these students? Why weren't you involved in these students' lives? You know, and so I mean I. I know we can't be responsible for everybody, and you can't make somebody not hurt themselves. Right. But, but I, 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 I don't say. But somebody just doesn't come one day. Oh, I'm going to kill myself today. They don't. Mm-hmm. They don't come to the. That's a gradual process, and and I and I really wish that youth leaders, church leaders, would be more involved with their youth. Right. And and. Uh, Pick up on these signs. You you can see, you can see this stuff. You can see, um, these signs of these things. It's not. It's not. Everyone's not happy go lucky, and then one day they're they're gone. It's so, something led up to that. And I just wish that the church leaders and youth leaders were more involved in in their youth because they're part of the church as well. Absolutely. And, and yeah, their lives are just as important as anybody that shows up, any adult that shows up on Sunday morning. So. And Eric, just like you, it's so important when you do get help that, you know, when when you have that enlightenment, enlightenment from Christ, knowing, God, you love me, and you're in that moment, it's then important to surround yourself with friends that are like-minded, that can encourage you and support you and hold you up, and, and you can do the same for them, but not everyone has that. And, you know, it's important to know the signs. It's important to know uh, what they look like, you know, so that we will reach out to other people. And, you know, because they, if they're introverted, they're definitely not going to come up and say, hey, I'm having a bad day, you know. And it's using right. that spiritual discernment. It's always having that prayerful mindset, like renewing our mind, like Romans 12, 2 says, don't be conformed to the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And if we're constantly doing that, 
we should have that discernment when we go into a place and we're surrounded by some people. God, how what's going on here? You know, it's in that mindset. How how do you want me to pray silently or, or who is it that you want me to pray for, whether it's at school, at church, at Walmart, wherever you're at, you know, just having that constant prayerful mindset. And, that, and that's discernment. Um, and I agree with you. We, we need we need to have our eyes open and to realize there are people hurting out there everywhere. I want to ask, when, when did you start writing your lyrics and when did you start rapping? Um, I've been rapping almost my entire life. Uh, like in the in some of the states that we lived in, uh, we uh, we lived in predominantly, uh, I guess you would say predominantly uh, black neighborhoods. Uh huh. And so, and so that was just the, the music that I heard. And, uh, so that I just grew up and I loved, I loved R and B and I loved hip hop. And so I just grew up and em- embraced that. And then I just started writing my own stuff. Uh, I would mainly, I would first start, I would take a song that I liked and I would just change the lyrics so that it was more, uh, me. And then. Are you there, Eric? Have I lost you? Here, I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you now. You cut out there okay. for a minute. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. So a, co- a couple of um, after after before I before I got saved, um, some of the stuff that I was writing was not uh, <laughs> really. It wasn't not only not God friendly. It wasn't uh, family friendly. You gotcha. know. Gotcha. So yeah. I'm kind of embarrassed by that stuff, but that that's still part of my my history. But then after I got saved, I wanted to, um, I, I, I gave everything to God except my music. I said, I want to, um, you can have everything, but the music's still mine. I'll talk about you in my music, but the music's mine. And, you know, that's not how God works. Mm-mm. And so so he wanted everything. And I went to, uh, do you know Rebecca St. James? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I went to, she had a concert, and I went to her concert, and she said, at the show, um, if you have a talent that God gave you, He wants it back because He wants to use it. Yes. And I felt like she was talking directly to me, and I was like, "Oh my goodness!" Mm-hmm. And so I was like, "Okay, God, it's yours. You can do whatever, whatever you want with it." And yeah, and so I just started focusing on Him and just writing about Him, and then I just started incorporating my life into the music also, and. My life, I am a geek, and so I started just, you know, making those analogies from about Christ and Superman and, you know, Star Wars and all this other stuff, and just started writing geeky Christian rap music. That's, that's, right. that's basically how that evolved, yeah. I don't see that as geeky at all, though, Eric, in my mind. I mean, I'm thinking that's pretty cool. I mean, in... And how much you can relate to the younger generation, you know, with the superheroes. I mean, my grandchildren absolutely love, granddaughters and grandboys love superheroes. So they wouldn't think you were geeky at all. They would they would think you were super cool. I love... Oh, yeah, because I, I am their, I'm their people. So. <laughs> yep, yep. I love that you fully surrender, and that's the thing. And even with, you know, when we have our own children... We don't take ownership of them. I, I've learned that through life to give them back to God, like Abraham gave back Isaac to God as, as a sacrifice. I mean, they're not our, they're on loan, just like our talents are on loan from God. Um, so you started traveling, and um, you heard God say to you, "Go." So tell yes. us about that. Okay, so um, my wife and I, we wanted to serve God more. Like I, I had my 9 to 5 gig, and I was doing shows on the weekend, and we wanted to serve God more than what we were doing. And uh, we thought we were going to move to Nashville. So we were on our way to Nashville to check it out. We were, we were driving there, and then I was like, I don't want to move to Nashville and do the same thing I'm doing in Phoenix. That doesn't make sense to me. And... And we were just praying as we're tr- as we're going to Nashville, and we both felt God say, "Go." Mm-hmm. And so we just went to Nashville and had vacation, and then we came back home and we started selling things and getting rid of things. And uh, once our lease of our apartment was up, we left. 
um, and that's and that's how it's been for the the past five years. Um, we've just been we go out for about eight months of the year, and then we come back to, to Phoenix for a few months and uh, recharge and record new music and and stuff like that. Okay, we're going to take a break. We will be right back with more Shape by Faith and Eric Stephen coming up next. Welcome back to Shape by Faith, where we shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. Eric Stephen is on the line. And Eric, thank you so much for sharing your story. And as I listen to you, my heart knew that you were obedient to the Lord. When you heard God say, go, you went. Um, I want to ask you, what is the message God has given you to share with the world? That he is real and you're not alone. Um, he loves you very much. He he died for you, and uh, he wants to be a part of your your life, and you know you to just surrender to God. Basically, just follow after him. Follow after him with your your, your soul, your mind, your heart, and yeah, it, it's not going to be an easy ride, and it's not going to be all rainbows and sunshine. But it's going to be so much better than the alternative. Absolutely. Well, I want to. I want people to know about your music. I listened to um, "I Kill Giants." Amazing. Um, oh, thank you. you. You are very, very. I mean, you are very talented, Eric. And I, I thank God that you're using your talents and gifts to draw people close to Him. But where can people find your music? And where can people find you on social media? Okay, so um, the best place. To listen, uh, I would. I'm on any streaming service. Uh, I prefer Spotify. That's uh-huh. what I do. I prefer Spotify over, over everything. So, um, Eric Steven, E R I K S T E P H E N. You'll find me on Spotify. Please follow me if you're listening. Uh, listen to some tracks, and I have a new song coming out on uh, the 16th called uh, "Serial Killer." Okay. Uh, and it's cereal as in breakfast cereal because <laughs> I love breakfast cereal. So. Right. Um, it, it's taking uh, my obsession with cereal a little too far in, in this, <laughs> in this uh, song. And I do that with an, uh, another nerdcore artist named uh, Lexa, Lexican artist. She's fantastic. Um, but uh, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, uh, both at Eric Steven Music. Uh, my website is ericstevenmusic.com. And uh, I also have, uh, if you feel like being you know, led to donate to our ministry, um, you can go to uh, paypal.me slash Eric Stephen Music, and you can uh, donate directly to uh, us. All right. I hope everyone heard that, and I'm going to write that in the blog so people will have that information written down. So how would you encourage, Eric, someone listening today to go and do what God is calling them to do? Just do it. It's 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 scary. Um, but God is not going to ask you to do something and then not give you the tools to be successful with it. Uh, you might, and success, success to him is different than success to the world. I just want to be clear about that because yes. you're not going to have, you, you might not necessarily have some, a ministry that is global and all these things, but uh, you're still going to be able to um, impact lives and you're still going to change lives uh, for for him, and that's what's important. Absolutely. Eric, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I'd love to check back with you in about six to eight months to see how you're doing. And okay. um, yeah, but thanks, and um, just keep doing what you're doing. All right. And all right. Thank you. You're welcome. And everyone have a blessed day. I'm Teresa Rowe.